Hey there, Jeff Manchester, Manchester Music, welcome. Let me ask you a question. How many tape or saturation plugins do you own or do you know about? Because there's a lot of them out there already, which is why when I saw Baby Audio working on a new plugin called Tape with an AI in it, I was intrigued, a little confused though, because the ocean is very red with competition. Um, if you're a third party, you're a company uh, that's not in a DAW, you've got a bunch. I, I wrote most of them down here. Um, and all these guys are great, by the way. XLNRC20, I've used it, it's wonderful. The Waves Factory Cassette, Fab Filter Saturn 2, I've reviewed that um, on this channel, or maybe I haven't. I've done a lot of Fab Filter reviews. Sound Toys Decapitator, definitely reviewed that. Another OG here is PSP Vintage Warmer. The A800 Studer uh, multi-channel, the UAD Oxide tape recorder, uh, uh, Denise Bad Tape Trash 2, of course, Thermal by Output Crane Song Phoenix. And if you're in your digital audio workstation, you know you've got a lot of great built-in factory free plugins, right? So if you're in Logic, you've got uh, Fat FX or the Exciter. If you're in Ableton, you have the Saturator or Saturation. Um, Lo-Fi Sansamp uh, you've got with Avid and Pro Tools and Studio One, I don't use. Uh, Cubase, don't use. But uh, what I'm getting at here is for someone to release a paid um, tape saturation plugin, um, you really need to differentiate yourself against the paid stuff and the free stuff that comes in your DAW. So Baby Audio decided that their way to do this, their competitive advantage was artificial intelligence. That's why when you look at the title of the plugin, it's T-A-I-P instead of T-A-P-E, get it? So I was very curious to see, you know, what this AI stuff is all about. I love machine learning and neural networks. I think it's so cool how this technology presents itself in self-driving cars, in, you know, climate uh, modeling, predicting the weather, all that stuff. And I was really curious to see how uh, Baby Audio would use this tech in a music plugin. And we're already seeing a bunch of cool applications for machine learning and AI in music. So we're gonna stop talking face to face, addressing the camera and hop right into the plugin demo. Let's check it out. All right, welcome. This is Tape or Taip. Sounds a bit like I'm Australian for no reason. A um, couple different UIs here. Well, actually the UI is the same, but the colors can change. We can go to a smoky gray or kind of charcoal or back to the white. And we can also expand it. But either way, either color, big or small, this thing still looks like it came uh, right out of 1997. <laughs> this is hilarious. Um, they definitely have an aesthetic, Baby Audio, and they they are kind of, they're proud. Um, so here's the plugin. Right now I have it instantiated on some drums, which is where tape sounds good, frankly, to squish and squeeze and glue and distort and poke out and all that stuff. Um, I think I have a couple other plugins too on this. Uh, yep, I have a Neutron and I also have a uh, UAD Fatso Junior. So I'm going to bypass those guys. So that we only just get the tape. Um, and let's have a listen to what that sounds like just right off the bat. Okay, there's no nothing. We haven't played with anything. Factory, drums, hot, preset. Here's before. Okay, so I'm definitely getting some flanging. We have to find out how to make that stop. Um, but no, that's hey, flanging and wow and flutter. That's all. That's that's all part of tape. So, okay, let's actually dive into what everything is doing. Drive over here is where I think we should start. Um, so we're going to be adding color. We can add as much color as we need with the drive, from a subtle touch to a fat, heavy distortion. They write here in the documentation. I'm assuming I bring the drive up and we get this hal. 3,000 or 9,000 uh, little looking thing here that is going to let me know that I'm doing something. Let's bring the drive up from zero. Double click to default. Thanks, baby audio for that. Nice. Let's bring it down. OK, 
Okay. That's cool. Um, Definitely driving gives us more fatness and thump. It doesn't affect the output. I bet that's why this guy is on. So it's a drive auto gain. If I turn this off, I bet it'll talk to the output and it won't um, constrain the output and almost have it behave like a limiter and it'll probably go up as this one goes up. A little bit like the decapitator has that switch for you too. Yeah, so my output is definitely going up, but I'm not seeing this red circle get any larger, which is interesting. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I would kind of expect this to go, this guy to get bigger as this one gets bigger if I have this disengaged. That sounds really cool. Uh, we're in trip hop territory there. So let's turn this back on and let's talk about the mix we probably don't have to because this is like parallel mixing right we can just bring the signal in and out as much as we want and of course um i forget what it's called but it's like parallel heart i heart something parallel compression plugin by baby audio so i wonder if part of that's under this slider here Interesting. Tape flanging on. I wonder what that means and why that's there. And if I can turn it off, I went to mouse over it and it doesn't allow me to switch it off. So um, I, I'm curious to get, to get the flanging off, but it doesn't seem like I can do that, at least from this menu. So anyway, mix lets you run the tape in parallel. Um, and ooh, interesting. The documentation says that if wear is engaged, you can use the mix to get a classic tape flanging effect. This is caused by the wow and flutter of wear running in parallel with the dry track when mix when the mix is 100% or is it below 100. Okay, so it looks like wear is on if I turn it all the way off. Ah, no more flanging. But if I turn it on and bring it down below 100, we get that flanging. Okay, well, let's leave it on for now. Bring this back to default of, looks like it started on four. Maybe it's default actually is zero, but on the, drums hot preset it was at four okay so now we know that wear and mix can talk to each other and flange or you can turn the flanging off thank goodness model so over here we have a uh, single and dual the single is a regular tape emulation they say dual creates a series of two tape emulations chained together under the hood applying half of the drive value this will uh, add slightly more weight to your signal let's try that out a bit more drive and go to dual. Are not really hearing a lot of difference here. Single. Okay, now I'm hearing a bit more resonance. Uh, maybe some vibrations coming off, hitting the floor tom, stuff like that. That's interesting. So adding a bit more heft without a ton of signal. That's that's neat. Um, we have low shape and high shape. So these sliders, they say, let you saturate the low and high end more or less than the rest of the frequency spectrum. So this is helpful, they say, if you want to warm up a drum bus without adding too much dis distortion to the low frequencies. Interesting. Let's play with those. <laughs> By the way, this is a little bit confusing, baby audio. People in the West, I think, you know, they read left to right. So we have noise, slider, wear, slider, glue, slider. But to have model and single dual, I was not sure if, if single and dual, and now I'm playing with the high shape. I thought single had something to do with the high shape and dual had something to do with the low shape, just because it's all like, again, left to right. Um, probably just me, but just something I'm noticing that's kind of confusing to me from a UI UX perspective. Maybe some lines to just kind of separate these guys so you know they're kind of not talking to each other, uh, these sliders on the right and left. Anyway, let's keep going here. So let's play with the high shape a bit more. Definitely getting some sizzle. Let's do low shape. Okay, nothing much there. Let's bring it down. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's nasty. That's disrespectful. I like that. Um, 
cool. Glue. Tape machines are known to introduce, they say, a pleasing compression-like effect due to their low dynamic range. So this lets you add that effect or even exaggerate it. So you can use it for subtle cohesion or as an actual compressor. Let's play with glue. Which I often did as a child. That sounds really cool. We're getting that vibration again from what sounds like the floor tom. I don't know, but it's really kind of almost pumping. So here's a situation where I would bring the glue in. I'm going to bring this out so you can hear it in the mix and bring the mix down just to get that kind of sweet spot. Actually, I don't like what it's doing <laughs> to my shakers. Wow, those are really bright. Okay, let's put it back into solo. Um, this is why, uh, children, it's always important to listen to things in the context of the mix and not just kind of hang out in solo in your little echo chamber where everything sounds amazing until you bring it back into the mix to get along with everyone else and everyone's fighting and it's not good. But glue is cool. Let's keep going. Above glue, north of it, we have some wear. And this is our flanging, right? Which we found out. There we go. Instant tame impala. And we have noise. Uh, I bet this sounds like white noise or maybe pink noise. Let's find out. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Did you hear it kind of dipped? Almost like there's a gate that was like, I'm not hearing sound anymore. I'm going to go to sleep. Oh, I'm going to come back up. And also, there's something dynamic about the noise. Um, it's not just like we turn it on like, a, like on tap, you know, just kind of steady state. That's really interesting. I like that. I didn't expect that. I think the last thing to cover here is the presence. And presence, they say, is part of, um, well, part of the warmth of tape comes from an attenuated high end. So presence lets you decide how much of that you want to actually attenuate the high end, you know, make, make quieter. Um, it can bring back the sharpness and brightness that is sometimes lost on tape. What's interesting is I'm hearing a little bit of noise, which is kind of cool coming in um, with the presence up. It's like it's kind of creeping back into the signal, which is interesting. Let's see what this sounds like in the mix. Let's see if I make the same mistake again. So it is really bringing up the drums, uh, the presence. I had to kind of bring back a little bit because, you know, my shakers, my percussion were getting a little out of control. But that's the fun thing. We can bring that down. That's why we have a presence slider. Um, normal and hot for uh, even more distorted levels when we hit hot here without affecting, they say, the output volume. Let's check that out. Hi. Okay, a bit more heft. That's cool. And the last thing here, auto gain, we talked about this. I think I guess what this was allows you to add more drive while keeping a consistent plug and output level. Yep, yeah, that's what that does. Very, very cool. Okay, let's play with some presets. Um, we started with drums. We're still on drums. Let's see if there's another drum. Oh boy. I kind of wish these were, okay, we have people's names here. I wish these were spaced out in terms of like categories of instruments. So like uh, drums, guitars, this is, or like maybe sub menus, um, which we can kind of tab down to expand. 
Okay, Drum Bus Plus by Rob Kleiner. Let's check it out. Oh, we're in Tame Impala land again. It's 1976. This is Sky Pilot. Google that song. It's really bad. There's a lot of flange on it. My dad always liked it, though. Um, TMI. Here we go. Let's keep going. Um... Let's find another drum one. Ooh, Drum Destroyer by Maximilian Jaeger. Okay, so that low end bump is coming off low shape. That's cool. Before? Okay, so I mean, this is an interesting plugin. I, ha I have to admit, maybe I was a little um, overhyped. Um, pun? Is there a pun there? I don't know, because AI was in the title. And I think of assistive technologies. I thought this might, I don't know, um, do something intelligent or assist me in some way when I see AI. Um, but it's really, I think it's, it's what they say is, it's really just a, a, a more accurate way to capture the soul and vibe of, of a tape machine as opposed to digital signal processing, building neural networks and things like that, which I guess, I, I don't know, I'm not an expert. Um, the DSP ones sound pretty, pretty good to me. So maybe I got thrown off by AI. I just thought it would um, mean something else for the user experience here. But let's kind of Let's head to the other side and talk about this plugin. Okay, so here's the verdict as far as I'm concerned. When I heard AI, when I read AI, to learn that really all it is is a new way to emulate tape um, ballistics and you know authenticity and vibe instead of using digital signal processing, it's a little disappointing because we already have really interesting applications of AI in music now. Think of the Magenta team working with Google for tone transfer. This is a thing that, you know, you play a flute and then it'll come out a violin or you hum a melody and it'll it'll play it on a whole other instrument. Or you've got Sonable, Smart EQ and Smart Reverb. Um, there's just all kinds of really interesting ways that this technology is helping you do something intelligently or helping do something on your behalf. Um, another example would be uh, the neural guitar pedal. I'm probably getting the name wrong, but you can feed it your favorite cabinet or saturation, uh, you know, effect on a pedal, and then it'll store that. You don't have to bring the pedal with you. You can just call it up and stomp it on stage and, and get a sound. So that's kind of where I thought Baby Audio was going with this whole AI thing. And to learn that it was really an alternative for modeling um, is a little kind of want want. You know what I mean? Like this is 2021, do something assistive or interesting with AI. It, in their marketing, they said that this is, you know, AI is overused or it's, it's not, it, it's a buzzword, but we're really doing something interesting with it. I think what's going on with Baby Audio is they're kind of filling out their portfolio of products. They've got delays, they've got parallel compression. You know, they didn't really have a saturation tool as far as I know. And so this is a way for them to get that and also a way for them to differentiate themselves a little bit in the market with this AI thing. But there's so much choice and a lot of that uh, choice is free. It's stuff that comes in the dot or it's cheap. I like to think of Baby Audio a little bit like Valhalla, very simple interfaces, um, very cheap. So the entry is very, you know, uh, it's very easy to get in there and play with this stuff. But I'm looking around at the competition. I'm looking at what I have in my DAW and I'm not really seeing a whole lot that's interesting or truly unique about this tool. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Now, does it sound good? Yeah, it does. Um, I mentioned the UI is a little 1997. Uh, I mentioned some issues with the UI and the user experience, thinking that things that are next to each other um, are, you know, corresponding in some way um, and that being a little bit confusing, but it's uh, 40 bucks, I think, US right now. It's on sale. There's an intro price. So yeah, it's okay, but you know, Maybe I was a prisoner of my own hype with the whole AI thing. But what did you think? Curious to know, as always, leave me a comment, download it, try it, disagree with me, agree with me, whatever. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.